Ong Lan's a snappy up jab and a good leg kick. Uh, and then uh, round five, a couple crisper punches from Ong. He's much crisper with his punches. And another even more beautiful, boom, Kazushi was a back sweep. Or sometimes called like a samurai throw kind of when someone has a rear bear hug on you. So to top turtle, Ken's always turtling down. Uh, three minutes left and they scramble back up. Snappy up, jag leg kick, uh, as I said earlier. And then the finisher, I'm being much fresher. Superman punch to a good knee to the body to a jab that looked kind of on the bottom chin and slipped off to the throat. And um, then a body shot, boom, and then a right shovel uppercut for a beautiful face plant down KO. Guys, really an amazing fight, especially that third round. Uh, awesome sweeps and uh, awesome camaraderie. You guys got pictured together the next day, and they're both all swollen and mangled up. Um, and that was really kind of a Bushido old warrior, kind of pride never die, Ryzen 1 of kind of taken over the leftover kind of vibe of pride. Um, really cool to see. Hasegawa was like there uh, in a lot of ways. Technically his stand-up was much better. His, 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 he's really hard to take down guys. Um, I have like five, six videos, a lot of different types of sparring with him. Um, I think I only took him down once. He's taken me down a couple times. He's crazy hard and side control to get out of. I did that once. And um, anyway, guys, awesome fight. Thank you so much. Um, now on to Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Tim Karen takes on Jordan Williams. Jordan Williams has type 1 diabetes. They were talking about, about uh, autoimmune diseases. I don't talk about it that often, but those that don't know, even though I've gone around the world and sparred more top MMA fighters than any other analyst out there that, that, that doesn't train or only has a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, I actually fought when I could. I competed when I could. And, um, you know, I have lupus. I have a horrible autoimmune disease, SLE. So I like what Jordan Williams is doing and trying to preach to kids um, that have diabetes and, and uh, autoimmune diseases that they can uh, accomplish things. This was at middleweight. Jordan Williams, South Paul, did a beautiful punching blitz off the bat, almost Vitor versus Vanderlei Lake. Lands in top guard, um, then half guard, and decent ground about. Cannon tried a couple electric chair sweeps from lockdown, but Williams' base was way too solid. He, uh, Karen also makes mistakes. His lockdown wasn't really tight enough or stretched out enough. Karen eats five elbows and then gets back up with 30 seconds left. Uh, lands a good standing elbow. He's on 10-9 Williams, in my opinion. Round two, Williams lands a bunch of punches and a double leg. Easily, Karn just falls down. Karn flounders on his back, taking ground pound all around. Everything he did was kind of slop jutsu. It wasn't very tight. Um, he didn't look like he belonged there. Sorry, uh, give him some cheek bombs today. Round three, good hand speed by Williams. Karn gassed, uh, punch shy, and, and turned away from punches, and he doesn't belong. He was, he was mentally defeated by the end of the first round, either because of fatigue makes coward of us all, or, you know, the guy's just, just, just not cut out for this. Um, I'm not sure how much notice he had. Maybe both guys were short notice uh, going back, so if I'm being a little too hard. But, you you, you know. Dana White called me up at 41 years old. I ain't shying away, looking away from punches, and I'm not just falling on my back. Um, um, maybe he can go fight uh, uh, a pro wrestler next or something. Okay, he had no takedown defense. Practically falls him back again. Williams... Uh, Passes off a bad double wrist lock Kimura attempt. Uh, very loose. It kind of baited it. Passed off it. Uh, and then passed. Landed a couple elbows um, from side control. And Herb Dean mercifully stops it. Williams has good potential. But he needs more killer instinct. Definitely. But he was on five days notice. And he also had a torn hamstring or something like that. So perhaps if it wasn't on five days notice. Um, he could have pushed the pace more. Had more killer instinct. Like sometimes he was punching, why and he should have been elbowing, and that's from training if you don't have enough real fight experience to know, like, man, I mean, he was at times, but there's times when he should have been sooner before going, oh, yeah, I can elbow, right? Because you have the muscle memory and the habit from training, not elbowing your training partners in that. Um, anyway, definitely guy has potential, needs a little more killer instinct, not sure how his diabetes plays into his cardio output. Um, five days notice, definitely could. So it's kind of probably a combination. Julian... Uh, Erosa versus Jamal Emers. Uh, tough and two-time UFC vet. I paid attention to him on tough. 
uh, Rosa versus Embers. Both guys fast hands, but both hands are down. Lots of kicks. Both land a couple solid punches in the first round. Rosa, very awkward. Kind of Dominic Cruz imitating like this. If I remember correctly from the Ultimate Fighter, he was a little, I like the style better, was a little more uh, karate-like, flow-like here. It was trying to be more Dominic Cruz uh, flow-like with angles and stuff. And he did well, but I kind of, I don't know, I kind of remember was more excited uh, previously. Um... He lands a big knee. Embers knocks him on his butt with jab at the end of the round, uh, second round. Not a solid hit, but off balance hit. Knocks him down. Maybe that won him around. Who knows? Round two, both guys slinging like a street fight with their hands down. Like like you kind of see street fights and guys are trying to impress the crowd around him. Maybe trying to impress Dayton White, get that contract. I don't know. It was a little awkward, a little weird. Uh, but both guys are fast and they rely on that speed. Um... Rosa lands a left high kick, so kind of Emmer's messed up and faded away, and he even had his right hand up, but he faded away from the southpaw to the power side, a la, sorry, Michael Bisping, a la Bisping getting H-bombed, kind of circled into the power hand on the way out. He was backing up. There was a punch blitz on the left high kick, and boom, left high kick knocked him down. Bang, bang, finish. Uh, good, good, good win by Rosa. Dana White later said he'd definitely uh, keep an eye on him. Spoiler alert. Okay, Josh uh, Parisian, heavyweight from Michigan, um, versus Greg Rebelli, heavyweight who we've seen before on the Contender Series. Josh came in on four days' notice. Uh, Josh has to cut weight even now when he's already been losing weight to get to 265. So if he's going to take his career seriously, he needs some, some better uh, all-year-round strength and conditioning, better diet. I know people in Michigan are like, he needs a better diet. Yeah, uh, I think he's in the same camp as my friend Juju Eau Claire, who I originally interviewed at Ryzen before she even fought at Ryzen. Um, I think that's what that's where Juju used to be, I believe. Uh, anyway, Josh Parisian, big guy, I think he's 6'4", cutting to 265. Uh, it takes on southpaw or belly, and right away starts throwing all kinds of kicks, including spinning back kicks. Uh, lands his fourth, uh, I think, spinning back kick or third spinning back kick solidly to the stomach. And then basically right out after that, spinning hammer knockout. Boom, beautiful spinning hammer. All I learned it from watching the movie Real Steel with that awesome blue and red robot Metro in that first zoo fight in the Hugh Jackman film Real Steel. I don't know whoever would have thought of doing a big spinning hammer attack. Yeah, that was me actually. I did the motion capture. I was the robot Metro in Real Steel. If you didn't know it, and that's exactly what it looked like. Like we've also seen some Bellator knockouts of King Mo that way. Um, next up, Austin Tweedy versus Tay Edwards. Tay coming uh, out very relaxed and like a Cobra Strikes knocking uh, Tweedy out with a right hand like a shotgun blast. Boom, on his butt. Tay with wrestling back out speed, power, and training at the MMA lab, lab under John Crouch. Uh, could go very, very far. Um, so keep an eye on Tay Edwards. I mean, he kind of faked down just like earlier, like we talked about. Uh, on the Bellator fight, like you, like almost like a fake shot or a jab to the stomach, uh, like Kevin Randleman, boom, knocked him out. Beautiful. And then and Antonina Shevenko versus Jamie Navarro was the main event at Flyweight. She's the older sister of Valentina Shevenko. She's a southpaw. She's got a 40-1 kickboxing record, 5-0 and uh, MMA record, fighting out of Tiger Muay Thai, been training since 7, um, had the same coach forever. She hits a check hook right away when the girl's backing her up against the cage. Pivoted out with the check hook. Boom, beautiful. Beautiful. Lots of plump clenches. A lot of plump clench knees. She starts destroying the other girl. Bloodings up her eye. Um, back to the feet. More plump knees. Um, at one point, the girl tried to throw and she countered with like a lateral drop. Ended up on top. She could have ended up in a belly arm swim move armbar if the girl's jiu-jitsu was a tiny bit better. Um, so she made a mistake and then she ran on the mat, which Bisping called out. She could have gotten Kimura, Plata, jumped to triangle. You don't put your hands on the mat. So she needs some more work on her grappling for sure. Um, someone I'd love to help coach, uh, you know, being a BJJ and high on black belt. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the feet, more palm knees and good ground and pound. Blowing eye and Navarro even more. At the very end of the round, Navarro gets inside triple Uchigari. Round two, more 3-2 combos and front kicks from Shevenko. Good distance control. Nasty knees from the clinch. Herb Dean stops in. Second round, TKO. And Tay Edwards and Antonina Shevenko go to the UFC. And Josh Parisian will go to the Ultimate Fighter, says Dana White. 
what Dana White says, it's usually what happens. So guys, that is the MMA recap or the MMA breakdown with your actual MMA technical analyst right here. I hope you enjoyed it. There wasn't anything that was too awesome other than the Kuzushi Waza sweeps compared to last week's events. But guys, watch every week. You'll learn a bit about the sport. You'll learn about some of the techniques. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you thumbs up. I hope you share it. I hope you subscribe. And anyways, thank you very much. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and I will catch you on the flip side.